We need a miracle. It's very important. Trust me, I know I'm good at this stuff. <laughs> that's just, that's very funny to me. <laughs> Y'all ain't laughing, though. Right? So Jungle Cruise. We're talking about a story of somebody who did not die. We don't know this. This is revealed by our captain of the boat. And uh, there are a number of themes in the films. What's What struck you as a... Why did you like the film, Kevin? Uh, the, Theme-wise? I don't know. Comedy. And I didn't know about... Again, I didn't know about that he was 400 years old. So to mm-hmm. me, it was just this guy who... Rock's character yeah. was, and the lightheartedness of the seriousness of the whole matter. Kind of like um, that he he didn't seem to take setbacks or insults personally. Right. Think about that, right? He, he was like the character that it didn't matter, right? He just needed to get on the river, right? And then later on we realized why he needed to be at the river, right? Because yeah, yeah. of the curse. Yeah, it's... it's but, Interesting talking about it now that I know that, mm-hmm. but because it all that all came later to answer all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the also what what was really interesting to me, kind of plays into real life is the pretension of it all. So the way he did, he took out his junk cruise, his business. And he had all these props and all these things set up. And the tribal people come in and do, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, like right. the one guy is over yeah, on it. Right, right, he's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the universal <laughs> body language, right? <laughs> we had one job in this jungle. <laughs> <laughs> However, then the the seriousness of the characters that were uh, frozen, mm-hmm. you know, and how they were desperately trying to uh, get back. Yeah. Right. It's like break the curse, get their life break back, the curse, and yeah. yet their life, you know, was, yeah, wasn't, wasn't necessarily living. So let me, do, I'm just going to read through my notes mm-hmm. and then we'll focus on these things. So it's not about living, it's not about dying, and it's not about the experiences or FOMO, right? You know, um, it's about whether or not living and the experiences or even dying is meaningful. Mm. The conversation that our captain had with Lily, right? And, um, he says, you know, she's like, you know, we're going to lift the curse and then I'm done, right? Like, I'm not going to live anymore. And she is getting attached to him as this kind of person that should live, that should be able to see the things he wanted to see, right? Motor cars, London. And he says this, he says, hey, Lily, look, everything you see that is new in this world, I've seen hundreds of thousands of times. And then she says, hey, here's our wisdom, right? Yes, but none of it has been meaningful, mm. right? So it's not about life. It's not about death. Not about. It's like, is there meaning in any of those things? And until there is, you haven't lived. Mm-hmm. And that's that's I think the the theme. Yeah, and I guess in this, I mean, there was that implication of falling in love. You know, the meaningfulness mm-hmm. of that that falling in love. And maybe think the kind of person that you could fall in love with, right? I mean, who's the guy? It could be with this kind of woman, right? She was annoying and irritating to all, all of English society, right? And yet she's also this independent woman. But if you want love, do you have to give up one to have the other? Or is there the right man that matches that? Yeah. And then the, I've seen hundreds of thousands, you know, everything in this world I've seen hundreds of thousands of times. Yes, but none of it. That's kind of her saying, yeah, but I've never been part of that. Yeah. Right. You've never had meaning. And so, right, because she says, she goes on to say that, um, um, I could be your world. And then he later confirms that even if you were my world, right? And then he tells the brother when he's going to go sacrifice himself, tell Lily. Yeah. And she would have been more than enough world for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, Lily's greatest fear, right? We know there's um, some sort of fear in every movie has this unspoken um, dramatic need, and that is this, right? The, the character, the would-be hero, is faced with this question. You know, I'll do anything to accomplish my goal. Just don't ask me to do that, <laughs> right? And her fear, of course, was water or swimming or whatever, fear of drowning or something. You know, so, you know, that is the fear. And then we they, they amplify that with the confinement, right, inside the little trap door that eventually reveals the thing. But 
that's the sacrifice that was necessary to accomplish it. And very often we're supposed to see that, of course, we're supposed to see it as the audience members, not very often all the time. We're supposed to see it as in our own life, what is it we're afraid of that causes us to do some sort of substitution or some sort of withdrawal instead of do the one thing that could get us not just over the fear, but finally get us into our promised land. Mm. And then the, how she was locked in the cage. So not only was she had to go through her fear to get there, yeah. once she's there, she's locked in now. Yeah. And so now there's no escape. Yeah. And, and see, about, remember the part about his size. And I think this is the screenwriters do this. Every number, now and then we, we watch a movie or we, we review a movie and we're wondering if this was an accidental piece of genius or did the screenwriters know they were doing this, right? But the fact that he couldn't fit through and Joseph Campbell, right, in The Hero with a Thousand Faces, says that every hero must take the journey for himself alone. Mm -hmm. You can't come along with somebody else. So he could get her into the water and get her to the gate, but just like Morpheus in the elevator, yeah. only Neo can walk yeah, through the door. That's, that's symbolic, because if he could have easily gone in there, he just would have opened yeah, the thing. Right. So yeah. she had to do that. And, right, yeah, so she had to be alone, facing her greatest fear by herself in order for the overcome, right, become someone new. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Um, here's my lesson as I was first watching it, the hero school lesson. Never take your brother along on a journey of discovery, right? And that's true about the, every family member. I, you know, I was watching this TV, the TV series Suits, you know, and here's someone that comes from a certain world, and he's coming from a world where he's gifted, and he's always been used by the close friends or family members in that world, and they've kept him back. Well, when things get hard... Look, you, you're not going to make it in the new world if you keep going back to those old people, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so interesting that they include bringing the brother along, um, which, as we first saw already, carries all this luggage. And, of course, luggage and baggage is a great metaphor for you're keeping me down, keeping me from discovery by weighing me down with all of your baggage. Um, but uh, another you know, big metaphor part. What else here? I think, uh, just real quick, I, you know how uh, Rock's character was always using uh, props and pretension to get. So I think that fits into, I've done, I've seen this world hundreds of thousands of times. So he's learned that he has to manipulate the uh -huh. mind huh. To, <clears throat> to get it to do, otherwise just that mundane loop just keeps forming and which is, he was probably not knowing it, waiting for someone adept enough to go all the way through with him, which was her. That well, stubborn and, and, character. And so, I mean, and it helped me understand that this is what I'm, this is what you're saying is that when life ceases to be meaningful, whether because it's gone on too long and you haven't made it to your promised land or not, if life isn't meaningful, then we resort to props. That right. whole message. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 that whole thing. Because we have yeah. to. Sure. We have to start building right. these antis. Well, um, Stephen Pressfield in um, The War of Art, he, he says that we build shadow lives, right? Where we fill the life with all these other things that aren't part of the real thing mm -hmm. um, in order to, you know, give ourselves some sort of meaning, but more or less they're just props. Yeah. Yeah, and I was talking with a friend last night, and we were saying how... Is it a friend from your past? From before? <laughs> how... how we know, like in her case, I know what to do. I read the books. I know what I should do, but I end up doing not that. Mm. I end up, like say for instance, to have this kind of ease and peace in my life, I've had enough advice, I've read enough books, I just need to do this, like eat right, whatever. But I don't. Uh, and the, the argument was that she, and then I see it too, this is kind of what I've done, is to go ahead and go through that, even though I know I could do this, but I'm still gonna let myself go through the pain, anguish, whatever it is. Like this was the example, <clears throat> the fear, going, using fear to get angry hmm. so that anger helps me pop hmm. and find resolve through that. So I hmm. have to use the anger instead of staying away from the anger, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So I know that being angry isn't healthy or whatever, 
but but better. I have to do it yeah. because that's what's gonna. If, so you're saying that you can convert fear to anger, and that's better than withdrawing, or just let yeah, let myself utilize something that's not really looked at good in society as a means to get through something. Uh, so oh, now so I'm trying to relate it to this movie. I had it, but now I forgot it. Uh, I left it. It's uh, um, well, it kind of fits into this thing that Rock was doing. Of you know, you're not supposed to manipulate people, yeah. But I have to, yeah. So I have to use people's mm. fears, yeah. My own, uh, put myself mm. in a situation where I could easily die. I don't have to do that. I could just easily go this way and live this cool life but but something's making me put myself in harm's way because mm-hmm. something is that I think that's the meaning mm-hmm. thing oh well and it, well in terms of the harm's way I mean we didn't know till later that he was bulletproof right right and so right there's <laughs> that um, but we also know that he's it still left a mark right he still had to be sewn up yeah right uh, there's a there's a portion of this that, you know, as we read, as we look more deeply into it, instead of it just being a Disney movie for entertainment based on a ride at Disneyland that gets more people to go to Disneyland to pay for that ride, right? Instead of it just being that, and it, there being, you know, some elements of a movie that would, that would, that would attract A-list stars, right, to star in it, right? Um, then maybe the screenwriters have put in the philosophical themes that, you know, converting fear to anger. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the resolution of how do we know the curse was really broken? Mm-hmm. And, and of course, at the very end, you see that, you know, The Rock or Dwayne Johnson has this, you know, blood on his head and it hurts. Yeah. That's right. He yeah. never has complained about any pain before. Right. Right. And then we see him in England. Which is proof, right? So you have to show the future mm. on the other side of the curse. And I, if I may, real yeah, quick, yeah. it's not so much converting fear to anger; it's using breaking through fear to use anger. So here, I have a great example. Okay. Just showed up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so say I'm, I don't know how to swim, and I'm sitting at the edge of a pool. So I could easily go, well, I'm afraid because I can't swim. So I could just, you know what? Later on in life, I'll learn how to swim. I'm not going to do it now. I don't know how. Or versus, yeah. I guess I'll learn. Right. Jump in, drown, or swim. Yeah. That that's what I'm saying. So I know the right things to not drown. Yeah. But I'm going to take that chance anyway and just throw myself in. That's kind of what I mean. So you know, using instead of going, well, I can't get mad. Just anger is the, the thing I'm going to need that's going to burst me mm-hmm. all my veils away, so I can be challenged spontaneously and have to do it that that's been my style through life is never kind of like i don't know i don't know it's just like go or somebody tells me don't don't put your hand in the fire because you'll get burned like i I can't hear that so i'll go put my hand in the fire again but oh and learn on my own like that that's Mm kind of that what i meant by uh well it fits into what she was doing Simply put, just doing it. Yeah, knowing right. that. Well, she, you know, that's you know, her biggest fear. Let's see. Is she weighing risk and reward? But if we set this up from, she's unable to speak to the Royal Academy of Science, right? Because she's a woman, or because she's annoying, whichever <laughs> you pick, right? So she's unable to to do that. She's trying to fulfill something that's like a calling, like unfinished business with her with her dad, mm-hmm. right? So she's compelled to go without even thinking. And she has just a small little bag. Mm-hmm. Right? So she's not even thinking that I'm going in there to be a research student for two years. Right? She's going in there to use this arrowhead to find the treasure. Right? Find the treasure. And even the way she gets onto the boat, that whole oh. chase scene. Oh, sure. I mean, she, oh, yeah, she, yeah. She's the kind of character that mm-hmm. it's, she's not going to just walk to the boat and get on. No, yeah. there has to be some dramatic thing that compels right. her right. to yeah. do what she does. Yeah. I think that's that's yeah, a it, really it, big. It's everything but a jungle cruise, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll do anything. Just don't ask me to do that. It could be that one person's world is enough. I don't know how you feel about that, you know, because 
you know, um, and, and perhaps it um, depends on someone's love language, right? Is it quality time or is family one of their, their values or is it something heroic or a mission? And whenever like two people get together, let's say they get married, that they're actually making a decision that one of the other chooses to live within some the other's world or the two create a new world that, that the both of there so so that's actually a theme that should be in education it should be you know taught more and made aware more because people get together and they say oh I like him or I like her and yeah but there's there are worlds attached to each person and somebody either giving up that or they have to inherit a world that's not so good right we see that in all kinds of movies um, I, I, I don't think they did a good enough job at defining that or amplifying mm. the world part, mm. and that's such a big theme. You know where I, the, the length of his, you know, this whole, I've seen a hundred thousand times, that, to me, that's now spiritually speaking, like, say, samsara, or the birth death cycle over and over and over eternally, it's kind of like that. So it could be that one person's world is enough is sort of taken a, a larger look at birth death cycles in that that's not really what it's all about hmm. it's the it's that sense that's a kind of a oneness thing for lack of a better term the that we're all kind of reflecting in the same anyway we need a miracle it's very important <laughs> that's like what that. i'm saying so yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, let me see. So yeah, spiritually speaking. So like profoundly speaking, him going through all those to finally meet her. To so he can see value in something that has become so mundane that he's made it a play toy for himself. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. So there's kind of a yeah an encompassing thing that happens. Well, well okay. So on that on that subject, let's back up to again. We're either trying to discover what the screenwriter's intent was or what they were thinking, uh, or was it an accident? We're reading our own stuff into this. Right, right. But did, notice how he didn't take anything seriously, right? So you notice that, right? Mm -hmm. So he took nothing seriously. In fact, his whole things were puns, mm -hmm. right? So over time, that if you're not taking anything seriously, perhaps it's because you don't believe anything real can happen anymore, right? You've seen everything a hundred thousand times. Mm -hmm. And so we look at then the type of character who has lost the sense that something is real and if real, dangerous, really, truly dangerous or worth the risk, right? right? Not just, is it dangerous? Is it worth the risk? Is it worth the danger? To achieve it yeah. and so that is anchored by the fact that he didn't think they'd ever find the treasure in order to write the tree in order to break the curse he was done resigned he can't find it right and then um, it's only her persistence right that helps him go forward and of course then they have to go forward yeah. right because of uh, you know other needs and yeah so it could be that one person's world is enough it relates to me resonates with me in that my love language is acts of service. So this rock character, acts of service is a big thing. He's offering a service. Yeah. Uh, not kind of knowing, at least seemingly not knowing what he wanted. It's almost like he just resigned and he's alive all the time. He's yeah. like, ah, Well, he's just, just trying to get his engine going so he can stay on the water because he can't be away from the water like or that. pull him back. So it's just come down yeah. to that for him. Right. Existentialness of I've so, been around so many times. It's it's everything's yeah. here. Yeah. So she comes along, blows his world up. Right. So that's that one person's world. So because mm -hmm. acts of service, me knowing that so deeply, that craftsly speaking, it's never about me. I'm of service. Yeah. So her needing of that service and her stubbornness and this annoying persistence is what was neat that one person's world was enough yeah. to burst through I've seen things a hundred thousand times so now I'm just making fun of everything I just need my motor running man right I just need fake people out and have well, fun so, so let's get back to movies right movies inject drama in order to make them connect with us yet in real life we are supposed to see the drama what caused the drama and not put it into our real life. 
Right. right. We're not supposed to imitate the movie, but we're going to say if we're in drama, we can at least diagnose the drama and then get on the other side of it. Of course, most of the drama was caused by bringing her brother along. Mm. And again, the brothers may all be good guys, but they have habits and they have a way of thinking in the past and they have baggage that eventually, I mean, he gets captured. And that's the reason why it was why everyone had to sacrifice themselves and not have a million of those pedals to heal people is because he told the submarine Nazi how to find them, right? And so we see this in the movies. And so you and I, let's say we're in there with, you know, 28 other writers at Disney and we're writing the screenplay and we're saying, okay, how are we going to create drama? Oh, we've got to bring a relative. Mm. Well, it's there, right out of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's right out of Lot and being was, brought along. There was, this, there was this subtlety of when Rock and the brother connected. And it was when he was making puns, he was making fun of his sister, and he laughed. Yeah, and, uh, the first person that liked it, right? But they had to have that, yeah. or he would have thrown him overboard yeah, so quickly. It, it built drama. It built Well, that, that built, what, what do you call it? It uh, fed his significance, his ego. Yeah. Finally, somebody cares about my pun. And then, right, and then... The or brother. I would have thrown... I tell you, if I had been him, there would have been no redeeming quality, right? <laughs> if he was just an idiot or an asshole, I would have thrown him overboard. And then same thing, on the other side, the brother's point of view... It's like you, Kevin. Yeah, it's exactly. like when you get oh, on a roll telling puns. Oh, I can relate. <laughs> and then, uh, so then the brother, by laughing, also, uh, it allowed the drama to open up between Rock and his sister. So by him laughing... He was won over huh. because Rock made a pun. That's a sister. That's a good point. So yeah. he's just like, right. yeah. I've been wanting to say that for for years. I don't right. want to uh, say that. To, I have sisters, right? So it's like, oh, I don't want to say that. Thanks for saying right. that for me, man. Kind of thing. That yeah. kind of. Well, and, and look, look at the deeper side of the the, the further deeper in the movie. That, that clearly, that must have been what the writers were thinking because. They had her in the in the future scene when they were in London. They had her being the one that was using the puns when they were driving the car. Remember, yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. she had become yeah. the pun person. <laughs> so um, you're right. So it was a story arc of puns. It was a story arc of of meaning and care, right? Where he's learned how to care again, right? And um, obviously there was sacrifice and resurrection, right? Neo in the Matrix being kissed by Trinity, and you know the flower in this case, and. And you know the other character that I never really got into or never I mean I got into her but I never really thought about much was the the main woman of the tribe hmm. when they when they landed and yeah. the one that the one from Brooklyn. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, wherever, right, yeah, right. Or my big fat Greek wedding or <laughs> right, wherever right, she was from. Her. Right. That Amazonian. And I was I was trying to place her character. I'd like to hear your take on her, but yeah, because I don't I, I was, yeah. That's an interesting character to be in there. What yeah. she did for all these people, you know. The oh, way she right. She was able to. Yeah. That I never really. What do you think? Well, about let's her? let's break it down to say, okay, we need to have that, right? They're the writers. We need to have something in this show that shows that he cares about others, not just his boat and the river. So we find out he's been helping them get jobs, right? This is their paying job. He gets clients and pays them so they can live in their place in the Amazon without having to commit to working in a bar or working for all these people in, in the city, in the town, right? So he's actually, it's like, um, it's like what we found out about Dave in the movie Dave with Kevin Klein is that, uh, you know, and, and the actual president's wife says this, Sigourney Weaver's character, and she says, and he says, I, I run a temp agency. And we think he has a temp agency, but she says it, you help people find jobs. And here he is playing the president, and that's the president's role, but it seems like the president's only about himself. So we needed something to show he's not about himself. And here's a whole culture of people that love him Right, that allow them to maintain their jungle culture and still have some sort of ah, so she would be his sort of uh, uh, right hand man, kind of supporting yeah. him in that, like, like leading yeah. the people to make sure the message is across. Like, let's let, he help, yeah, she I mean, let's take a whole nother one, right? Let's take a whole nother template. Let's take uh, the Sherlock Holmes, let's take a Conan Doyle template. Who is Sherlock Holmes? She is. Who is John Watson, the protector, the military, the one who with healing power? He is, right? He's Watson. So who becomes 
you know, the, the Cuddy, the person in the House television show, mm. where Gregory House, MD, is the Sherlock Holmes. Wilson is mm-hmm. his Watson. Mm-hmm. Cuddy is the police chief. Ah, so she's yeah, the, the chief. Yeah, she's get the it police, right. She, she's the and chief. has the organization, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. right? Yeah. And while they can't solve crimes without Sherlock, right? They still have all the policing ability, mm-hmm. right? So they give clues, they hold on to evidence and things like that. And her commitment, you know, her commitment to her. Oh, she, oh, absolutely, of course. It's, it's yeah, so, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes sense. Well, that's just again, we have to find a template and decide if it skews from a template or if the mm-hmm. template matches or not. Hmm. I don't know if there's anything else there except for what was the last time you were at Disneyland going on that Jungle Cruise? Jeez. Oh, I don't think I have. I think the last time I was at J- Disney was before that. Yeah. Was ever built. Yeah. Sp- last time oh, I was at Disney, Space, Space Mountain? Mountain was still fairly new. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Sounds like 78 or something, right? Oh, that is that when Space Mountain was yeah. built? Yeah. Oh, no, it was after that then. It was, let's see, Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson thing would have been the newest thing last time I was. It was probably. Oh, it was 84. Mid, it was probably late 80s, okay. mid to late 80s, All last right. time I was in Disneyland. Okay. And then just went. Okay, that'll never happen again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but... Well, it was funny to go back... When you go back to Disneyland as an adult, right, after trips. And I remember going during a Spanish club trip and thing, you know, growing up here. And uh, to go back later and to see, like, Cartopia, right? And to see all these things that were visions of the future. And yet now they have kind of a sentimental value, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's probably not the right I kind mean, of sentimental been, value. We haven't been Trust me, I know I'm good at this stuff. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Tiger is. Me, not so much. <laughs> me, I'm more. <laughs> Our situation has not improved. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Tiger. Trust me, I know I'm good at this stuff. Here's me. Our situation has not improved. <laughs> <laughs> and then this yeah. is the other guy. That's your new target, unless it's not big enough. <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah, yeah. Right. So, good thing we're just testing here, huh? Yeah. Or is this going on air? Is this? Is, well, oh, I don't know. Oh, we're live. We're. <laughs> I'm. We're. Um, yeah. We're live. We're. It's on Facebook geez, Live. Hi, everybody. About thirty minutes. Right? We have three followers. <laughs> <laughs> and two of them are us. <laughs> and one of them is the NSA. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, because they're connected to Disney. Yeah. The Disney yeah, bomb. How they're talking. Yeah. All right, so this is um, this concludes our podcast on Jungle Cruise on this, um, what is it, the 29th day of September 2022. Kevin Anderson, Tiger Todd. And we never did really talk about all the characters. The German submarine guy. The, no, I we know, didn't. We can end this, but there's all this significance. But I think we nailed the beef of it. Yeah, the, okay, the key components. Note. The antagonist had precision had obviously support had you know higher quality this is what we do with all villains right is they is they're all often very right but for the wrong motives right and they have superior again superior weapon weaponry and resources and that seems like the impossible task is to get past and i think another great message for me was acts of service it's like look until i have meaning like if it's all about me i'm gonna go lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime But if it's not about me, that's the meaning. The one world, one person's world is enough to give me meaning because I'm serving that. And now it's not my mundaneness life after life after life, which is still cool because he did it good. Like to me, he did it, turned everything into this moment by moment existential, just enjoying himself, man. Not taking any of it serious because he's done that 10,000 times and realized that, no, it's not getting me anywhere. Right. (laughs) Right. No meaning. Yeah, and, and so when someone says they want to do something, he knows the end of that because he's seen it so many times. Yeah. And yet here was something new that she brought into the world, into his world. And if nothing else, it's that annoying nature to help ignite the the something grand in him that isn't tied to this mundane loop over and over. Well, maybe that's something that does make a good, let's just say, what is a... If there was such a thing as the divine or the perfect relationship, right? You two are supposed to be together, right? And that is, she could bring something new into his world. Yeah, one person's world is enough. Yeah. So I 
you know, she was enough to go boom and make him yeah. go, oh, geez, yeah. I am something more than this. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, now I feel on like that note, end, now on I that feel note. like we can end this. Thing. All right. I wasn't feeling complete <laughs> so long. <laughs> well, they don't come any closer than that. Sound about right. You have chosen wisely.